Hey, it's Sean Sean here uh, from SeanShawn.co, the artist at there. And also I do work on eBay, so if you want to purchase there. Today I'm going to do an art book review of The Art of Forgery by Noah Charnley. So it's a pretty solid book. Um, has a lot of different forgers, different uh, style of forgering. Uh, most of it's focused on painting. There are a couple uh, sculptor forgers, which is interesting. Um, one of the more cooler guys is uh, Van Heeren, Meeren. Um, I actually have a whole book on him because it's so crazy because they had it so well documented. But he was basically selling art to the Nazis during World War II. And uh, he was faking Vermeers. At the end of the war, <clears throat> since he was Dutch and a Dutch, people thought he was stealing Dutch paintings from Dutch Jews and selling it to the Nazis. So obviously they brought him to work as a war criminal. And he's like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm a forger. So he had to out himself after he made all his money. And so they, they don't even believe him. And so he paints a, a, a Vermeer fake um, in um, in court. But you can tell by the droop, he has really droopy eyebrows. His <laughs> eyelids is like, uh, I don't know. It's like, like the weirdest look ever you can see and you're like, how's this guy, how did it pass off as Vermeers? How did these guys with all this power and he had the goal to sell to the Nazis who were killing people and could have had him killed. So it's pretty interesting there. There's also another famous one, I'm, the name skips my head, but he did sculpture, kind of Roman sculpture, Greek sculptures in Italy and then he ran into a dealer. A dealer kind of, it was a two-part partnership, but the dealer was making all the money. The guy would get like 100 lira and then this guy would sell for 2,000 lira. <laughs> and then he had one he sold for like, uh, I don't know, like 100,000, the guy got 2,000. <laughs> it's still terrible. So then he, he tries to sue his dealers, which is totally crazy for fraud, even though he's the fraudster, right? And uh, so he takes him to the court and these guys kind of escape or they're you know taking a jort or whatever, but this guy never gets any money. <laughs> so he dies like a pauper because then he's known as a forger and no one wants to deal with him. So um, there's other ones in there that, you know, really famous painters, um, they never really get caught. So that's really interesting. Uh, another really weird one is this guy who posed as a father from a Catholic church, pulls up in a, a nice red Cadillac, pulls up to the museum and he donates the work. And they're not very good forgeries. I mean, they look good, but the materials are pretty uh, subpar <laughs> and then he disappears into the night with this whole fake thing that he invented with you know being a forgery <laughs> So it's like what he, why would you donate forge work to a museum, right? I guess it's just a kick to see if they would actually hang it on the wall um, So that's pretty funny and uh, there's quite a few stories in there I'm I've read it once and I'm rereading about three-quarters of the way through again So it's a really good book uh, really f interesting because you get a lot of interesting ideas as far as just artwork you know, as Picasso said, a good artist borrow, great artist steal. In these cases, <laughs> these guys are completely stealing the work. Uh, another famous forger I'll mention one last second is it was a, a crime syndicate. So in the sense, they would go in, break into a museum, and they would they would uh, swap out a painting like, similar to that one film with uh, Pierce Brosnan. I can't think of the name. The name escapes me right now, but that's a really fun film. And uh, they would swap these paintings and they were so good they last a couple of years before they were found out. So these guys would you know, escape into the night. Um, but yeah, it was more harder because they're, they're actually breaking physically into these museums to steal the work. And then they would sometimes sell the original. They'd go back, um, go to a gallery and say, hey, I lost my certificate of authenticity. Can you authenticate it? And obviously it was real. And so then they <laughs> sell the original after they stole out the false one. The only reason they got caught was because the same painting came up by Christie's and Sotheby's at the same time. Because the way the art world works is all the all the art will be sold all over the world, but all of it, the high quality stuff will always end up in New York. And so what happens is, even if you sell in Japan, China, which this guy thought he'd be smart to sell the forgeries in China, the real ones in New York, it all ends up in New York eventually. Because um, that's where the biggest art market is, so um, the biggest items there end up there. So if you're forgering, stick to the lower item. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a safer bet and there were there's stories in there of um, people of lesser known um, well they are copying artists of lesser known so it's easier to do the forgery because there's there's just less documentation um, but yeah that's my recommended book today really fun and you get a lot of good ideas for how to paint or uh, different uh, tactics in selling art <laughs> I don't think I'd recommend forgery but um, these you these do guys get off very lightly um, they get 
sometimes as low as a year prison sentence, and then sometimes they are more famous afterwards and people buy their forgeries. So it's very lucrative. <laughs> so to say, kind of like when you're hip hop and you, you know, go to jail for a couple months, come out and you're like, you're hardcore then, right? Same thing with art world, <laughs> you get caught to go to jail. These guys go from unknown to famous, so it can't work very for you. These are really fun books, all right? I've read several. This one, I, you know, is a good introduction because it kind of skims the surface. But there's other ones that deal just specifically on a particular forger like uh, Van Meer, in which I've read about. It's really a super interesting story. So I'd recommend it. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to my channel below. And, uh, you know, share with your friends. It'd be great. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you next time. And uh, who is your famous, most famous forger you liked? All right. Thanks, guys.